Yes! <laughs> the hero is here. <laughs> the witch doctor is here. The one you are used to. Okay? That's what that song by Jal Fraser is saying. The one you are used to. The tough one. The one that they sometimes fear. And the one that they sometimes hate. But that is the one that releases you from ignorance. Okay? She here. <laughs> I played that song when I'm tired and exhausted and I just want to give up or whatever. So I played that song and here I am. I'm back. Your witch doctor people. My sisters from other mothers because my daddy was that boy. <laughs> I'm back and I hope to do a series of videos, hopefully. And um, I hope one of the videos I want to do is on ancestral communing, where I can tell you all about the altar, how we do things in our religion. We don't worship ancestors. We commune with them because they are family. But I hope to be able to do it be, and to also give you our purpose in life. Our purpose in life is the Bantus. Like I always say, all religions are equal because, you know, the afterlife is like a, a, a world and it's got countries and it's got rules and you might be a sinner in one religion, but you're not in another, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Okay, this is going to be a tough reading. I'm already scratching my nose. And today, I am going to do a lot of R. Kelly, hopefully, today. And I am starting with his manager. I wrote his name down. Demetrius. Demetrius Smith. Demetrius. That's what um, we would pronounce it as. But I think you probably pronounce this Demetrius. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go Demetrius Smith. And he was all over YouTube, I take it, uh, giving interviews and stuff about his relationship with R. Kelly and how um, he was R. Kelly's mentor and how he um, didn't know about R. Kelly and underage girls and how when he was with R. Kelly, R. Kelly didn't do underage girls and all that bullshit and I happened to catch one when one of my subscribers asked if I could do a reading on him. So I went to Nick at Night and I watched her interview with him. And um, my ancestors were calling bullshit. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> yeah, they were calling bullshit and all that shit. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I decided, okay, we'll do Demetrius. And I hope I remember what he was saying because I'm sort of like, I'm going to say what my ancestors are saying. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, right now Demetrius is in the courts of the Bantus. Let the case begin. Okay. <laughs> so I... I'm going to do this as, in, as a relationship because I am a relationship expert. That's what my ancestors do. Sex, fertility, relationships, okay? Each witch doctor has a specialty. That's mine. So, <laughs> fertility and relationships. That's my um, specialty. So I can only read from a relationship structure, right? So I am going to put two people in this place, two men in fact, okay, R. Kelly and Demetrius. We might find out that they fuck. <laughs> I know I'm laughing, but something is actually coming up of that nature. <laughs> but we'll see, we will see. Anyway, I'm going to call R. Kelly first because his story is easier for me because I got the guy before. So I'll call him again. Robert. Well, that was easy. Robert. Robert. Whoa. 
welcome to Mama. Okay, Robert is really weary right now. Really depressed. He's really going through something. He is devastated. So something amazing must have happened for real. Um, he doesn't understand why he's being persecuted. He's like, what the fuck, what the fuck, I did nothing wrong. I spent a lot of money on these women and I did nothing wrong and now they're out to get more of my money. So, sisters, from my other mother, let's welcome Roberts. Okay. I'm just going to put the plate down because my wrist hurts because, girls, I have been doing rituals. Um, Robert right now is not the same Robert I met when I did the other, um, the other uh, videos, right? Obviously, uh, there has been, you know, a move in, in, in a direction that he doesn't like and he doesn't approve of. And he's really unhappy. He has no fear, though. This man is not afraid of shit he's not afraid of what will be and all that stuff he feels he is right he feels that he um is right he doesn't see anything wrong with what he was doing and that what was going on was consensual that's why it was even on tape his words not mine okay i know that there has been a tape that has been found but i already told you guys that this guy was going to prison I already told you. I know I kind of went against other psychics, but I told you he was going to prison one way or the other. And I still see that. But at the moment, he doesn't see it. And neither does his witch doctor, Mr. Jamaica. Mr. Jamaica doesn't... He still... He still wants his boy to get less time. All right? And he's working on that. And he's trying to stop shit from happening. So he's still doing his job. Congratulations, Mr. Witch Doctor. I bow to you. Okay. So um, now I'm going to call Demetrius. Okay. Demetrius Smith, who told us because we were not there, okay? He told us that he was um, R. Kelly's manager and ended up as R. Kelly's personal assistant. I would think that was a downgrade, but hey, let's go. Let's go with that. He ended up R. Kelly's personal assistant. No, he did not steal money from R. Kelly, but R. Kelly made everybody sign paperwork that um, you steal, you stole something. And we know this because Kitty, who I am going to do, the other female who wrote her a book about R. Kelly, I hope to do her after this video. She already, or one of those women already mentioned that and uh, Demetrius mentioned that too, right? Demetrius also said that there were no underage girls, but then he kind of like contradicted himself. Like they, they didn't look at the ages of the girls, right? And um, my ancestors are really calling bullshit on Demetrius's bullshit, okay? But we'll see if my other 93 ancestors will agree with the other three. Okay, so... um. He is, he said all these things, and so I'm going to call him now so that we don't waste time because this is a court right here, okay? <laughs> and you guys are the judges, the jury, and the executioners, okay? <laughs> I am just a messenger. I am just a messenger taking my sisters from other mothers out of the drudgery of life that is boring and showing them life that is not boring because it's not theirs. And giving up secrets that are not theirs. How much better can it get, girls? Come on now. Come on. Okay. So anyway, I'm calling Demetria Smith. And I'm going to use the left hand because he's a left-handed kind of guy. <laughs> oh, Demetria Smith. Demetria. Demi. Get into this place. <laughs> Demetria. Dimitrius, Dimitrius, and Dimitrius finally walks in here. He is a lazy motherfucker. He is so fucking lazy. Okay, I don't have to keep shaking. He is good with his words. He is really good with his words. He's slick. 
That's what we call them, right? He's very, very slick. He's never really held down any kind of real job. And when he does have a real job, he doesn't really do good at it. He does make great friends out of the people he works with and they keep him because he's loyal. He's a terrible baby daddy. He's terrible to his kids. He didn't support them. He didn't take care of them because he never made that much money. He says he only went to prison once, but I am seeing in this place a man who's been in and out of prison for doing shysty stuff, right? This is not a trustworthy human being. This is a human being who's actually very poor right now. Very, very poor. He's ill. He's got some kind of old, you know, middle age illness. And he has run out of money and... He's almost homeless, actually, and he doesn't know what to do. So this R. Kelly thing is like a gold mine for him. It is gold. Okay, shall we begin? The relationship between R. Kelly and Demetrius. The hypothesis of our medical, of, of our metaphysical science this evening, sisters from my other mothers, is, is Demetrius Smith telling the truth or is he a liar? Okay, we've already shaken them, so now I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw as close to myself as I can, so that I hopefully you get to see everything. Because I can only do a reading once, and then after that, it's history, right? It's like I can't do it again. So they come out in two batches. Here we go. I've got a stuffy nose, guys. You're gonna have to deal with that because um, it goes with part of all the rituals I'm doing and the lack of sleep. I've had very little sleep. Trust and believe that. Anyway, you saw me throw. I saw myself throw. <laughs> and this is R. Kelly and Demetrius. And as I knew, okay, I'm going to be using my grand, my great, great, my great ancestor's walking stick. It's not a walking stick, really, but we call it a walking stick. But it was a weapon. It was a weapon that, uh, like I said a thousand times, all my stuff has been handed down to me for, from generations of witch doctors because my family has always had one female witch doctor every generation. And I'm actually going to meet um, the oldest, the one who came before me. She's still alive. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going home. And hopefully I will take pictures of her so that I can share with you guys. Hopefully she'll be wearing her stuff. But I'm going to be in her house. I'm going to be staying with her in July in, a, in, the, in, the, in my ancestral village in Zimbabwe. Anyway, this has been handed down to me from another female ancestor who was a warrior, obviously. And um, it's actually a weapon, but we just call it grandmother's walking stick, right? You know, because it's shaped walking stick, kind of like. So I'm going to be using this because since I started my, um, my trans transcending business sometimes i get the messages so fast i have to slow them down so that i can actually give them to you and this walking stick does exactly that it slows them down okay so now you see i put my great grandmother's walking stick right there you can see r kelly <laughs> okay this is his life right here and his life is huge can you see this I'm wondering if I have to shake again for Kitty and them because I think I can actually just use this spread. But we'll see. Okay? Huge life. This is Demetrius. Small life. This is the last one that's on the board. So if you're seeing this, I doubt you'll see it by the time I edit because when I edit, the, the, the board looks even smaller. Okay. Um, this is the last one. Anyway, this is Demetrius. And as I expected of Demetrius... His is a very, very small life. Okay. Okay. R. Kelly, as we took him out of the plate, is going through it. This business is really beginning to hit him hard. He's lost a lot of money, a lot of canceled tours. His music is actually being muted the world over. What started as an American issue has practically spread. Everybody mad at R. Kelly. Everybody. Everybody. Right. However, 
as I'm hovering over here, I can still see that there are places where he can still go, still sing, still be happy, still make money. There are places in the world that are still going to be with him to the end. Because what is considered a crime in these United States is not a crime to them. So he's going to make a lot of money because they're going to take advantage of this situation right here. And they're going to book him more. And now that he doesn't have as many bookings, it's going to take a little less. But like I said in my very last readings of R. Kelly, this man will never be poor. Okay? So if you're thinking he's going to be poor, forget that shit. This man will die rich. Okay? So he's, once again, like I saw before, he's organizing his life, putting his life in order. And I don't know if you can see his witch doctor. No, I don't think you can because this witch doctor is right here. His shell is right here overlooking this whole shit. Working hard. <laughs> okay. And he's good. Okay. I'm going to turn to, this is Demetrius. Demetrius. This is Demetrius. Somebody calls him Demi. I think it's one of his numerous baby mothers. This man is a horror. If you want to meet one of the orienters of who R. Kelly is today, you've met him, Demetrius Smith. Okay? R. Kelly did not just come up with his debauched ways by himself. He had people who oriented him, who showed him the ropes, who showed him what he could do and how he could do it. Demetrius Smith is one of them. Like I said, because I'm in relationship sex and um, fertility experts. There was a lover's thing going on here between R. Kelly and Demetrius Smith. Demetrius introduced some of his stuff that R. Kelly carried on with. To R. Kelly. There was gay activity going on here. And Demetrius was more into it than R. Kelly. In fact, Demetrius was in love with Robert. So when he says, I love Robert. Trust and believe me, girls. That shit is true. That's shocking. I like, I like, I like doing this because I always get fucking shocked. What the hell? That shit is true. When he says he loves Robert, he is a scorned man. He's very upset. When he says he didn't steal money from R. Kelly, he took it from his wallet and he told him about it. That shit is true. But guess what? He stole it. He did. He took it after a night of some great sex with Robert. And Robert was lying on the bed. And he said, oh, I'm taking some money because my baby mama is harassing me. Just like he said. But he didn't, he didn't share the scenario in which it was done. Okay. Did he steal Robert's money? As Robert is saying he did. These shells are saying he stole my money, man. I had to let him go because he was stealing my money. Right? So did he do that? Well, the owner of the money is saying it happened, right? And that's why he let him go. But did he do that? He says, yes, he did. So this, ladies of the jury... Ladies of this here jury here? is a thief. <laughs> but we knew this. We knew this because I saw several stints in prison for theft of one thing or another. Right? So I knew this. Okay, I want to make this really short so that I can move on. So anyway, did... He know that Aliyah and Robert were getting it on because he was claiming he didn't. Okay, 
Let's ask R. Kelly Shells. Did he know that you and and Aliyah were getting it on? He says yes. He caught us a few times. He knew what was up. That's why I went to him when Aliyah told me she was pregnant. Which leads me to a question I've been wanting to ask this soul. Okay. He could have aborted Aliyah. You know, and it could, all, it could all have been forgotten. He didn't have to marry her. So did he want the baby? See, I didn't ask that question before. So this is my chance. Did you want the baby? He says, yes. You really thought he could make a marriage, a real marriage with him and Aliyah. You really thought they had that much going. You really thought they could be husband and wife because Aliyah was as kinky as he was and he was really happy with her he said she was a very giving girl meaning sexually she was a very giving girl so he really did want that child he wanted it i'm asking him where is the child and the soul shuts down i'm sorry people i really think there's a child here I really think there's an Aliyah child in their 20s moving around because every time I mention, I ask the question, the souls shut down. I can push them, but then maybe I don't want to. So for today, I won't. But if I come across it again, I'm going to. Okay. Maybe it's for their protection. Maybe. Because they shut down. What I know for a fact is there was no abortion. Aliyah carried to full term. That I know for a fact. There was no abortion. What happened to the Aliyah child and R. Kelly child, that's the mystery because he just shut down. He just shut down completely. And that's okay because we don't want to go through to another soul. We don't want to use one soul to get to another. This human being is their own soul in their own entirety. Right? So we're good. We'll leave it at that for now. Let's go to Dimitrias. Dimitrias. He said he didn't know. But he shows and said, yes, I knew. Hell, I knew. He fell in love with that girl. He fell in love with that girl and he kicked us all to the curb because of her. So there was a time when R. Kelly was faithful. The answer is yes. The time he was with Aliyah. Okay. So anyway. Let's go back to this no good motherfucker right here who is extremely lazy. Why did R. Kelly move him from manager to personal assistant and R. Kelly had a thousand personal assistants? Why? Okay, R. Kelly. Let the court know. Okay. <laughs> um... As a manager, Demetrius was terrible. He wasn't doing his job. As a pimp, Demetrius was perfect. He was bringing me girls and boys. He was bringing them by the dozen. And I haven't had a pimp so good since then. I'm going to ask R. Kelly this question. Then I'll ask it to this boy here, Demetrius. So, Robert, I know you knew that you were sleeping with underage girls because that was your thing. Was it also Demetrius' thing? Oh, my God. And here's our answer. He was more into the boys than he was into the girls. So, yeah, he, he liked young boys. He used to like me, too, when I was much younger. But when I got older, he wasn't into me that much anymore. You know, D Dimi, see, I knew somebody called him Dimi. Thank you very much. Ah, you know, Dimi. Okay, let's go back to that. And I have to use this because now it's fast. You know, Dimi, he only had women and kids to cover the fact that his first choice was boys. I'm getting more than we bargained for. Okay. 
Did he have a relationship with Ali? I'm, I'm asking the question, but I'm already getting the answer. He really hated Aliyah. He felt she got between him and I. He really hated Aliyah. Over to you, Demetrius. I didn't like her. She was uppity. Thought she could walk in and take everything. But everybody else liked her. She was sweet and giving. But I didn't like her. But why say that now? I didn't like Andrea too. Drea. I didn't like Drea. Drea was garbage. Drea started doing my job for me. I was the one who used to try out these little girls for Robert. I used to try them out. It was a job. Now, I'm going to stop him and tell you all that my ancestors did see that he also used to sleep with the same underage girls that Robert used to sleep with. And that age was everything, not just a number, in this here situation. So I'm not surprised that his shells are saying what they are saying. I'm not surprised that his soul is saying what it is saying. I'm not surprised. But let's carry on. Uh, let's carry on. Because we're running out of time. Okay, let's carry on. Um, Demetrius. What happened to Aaliyah's baby? He doesn't know. But he knows it's a boy. DNA. I believe it. I believe it. I have sensed it. I have felt it. I have heard it a thousand times in the wind. Okay. But like I keep saying, I'm not going to go into another soul because that soul is not a public figure and that soul has not asked to be on this board and that soul has not talked. It's not a public figure. But once you talk and you're in the papers and you're everywhere, you are a public figure. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to go into that soul, but see, I told you. All righty. And he, he, he's saying it again that he doesn't know what happened to it. He doesn't know. Okay. I'm going to get around that and ask, did Aliyah mother this child? No. So let's use our imagination sisters and, and believe that this child was put out for adoption. Once again, Demetrius the lazy is saying, I don't know what happened to it. I'm just telling you what I know. I don't know what happened to it. By that time, Robert had taken me out of his inner circle. I wasn't that close to him anymore. He was just acting funny. There, were, there was new blood around and he was into that new blood and I was having some legal problems and Robert wouldn't help me. And then Robert accused me of stealing his money and then it's just all got nasty. And then, you know, by the time we patched it up, that whole Aliyah thing was done. I can't tell you, though, that he really loved that girl. He really loved her. If they stayed married, it would have been a different Robert. Okay, I'm just going to ask this because I just want to ask it, okay? Demetrius, are you a sleazebag? <laughs> I just want to ask it. Okay, okay let's, hear, let's hear what he has to say. Yes, he's a sleaze. I knew that. How many jobs have you had, Demetrius? I am constantly incarcerated. So, you know, how can I work? How's your book doing, fellow writer? Because I'm a writer too, hey. How's your book doing? I'm hoping this R. Kelly scandal will make me a millionaire because this is my last and final chance in making money how much truth is in that book stop i'm saying to my great great grandmother stop hitting the man's shells sorry okay how much truth is in that book 
I left out some things about myself, of course. I will not incriminate myself. Who's the stupid person who would incriminate themselves? I will not do it. And I left out um, some stuff too that might incriminate Robert. Because I really, I love him. I really love him. But I would tell you my, my book is 90% true. And you should read it. No thanks. <laughs> okay. And for Demetrius and um, R. Kelly, I'm going to leave it here. Because really the the hypothesis of this metaphysical project was was Demetrius telling the truth, right? I think we now know that he wasn't, but it's over to you ladies of this jury. Okay, so I'm gonna play my song. I have decided to do um kitty. So I am going to remove these shells um I'm going to leave the shell, R. Kelly shells the way they are. And I'm going to remove these shells. And I am going to do Kitty. I think Kitty is going to be like 15 minutes, man. That's what I think. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> 